Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Microeconomics. We're in Chapter 9, International Trade Application. In this lecture, we will examine the benefits of trade. Previously, we talked about world price and comparative advantage, and now, in this application, we will discuss some assumptions made in order to understand the benefits of trade. Before we start, I want to introduce a new term to you. It's called price taker. You will learn more about this in chapter four, but for now, know that it means in a market system where you have buyers and sellers, a price taker in this instance is where the participant, whether it's the buyer or the seller, cannot determine the price he or she will buy the product, the good, or sell the good. Since they can't determine that price, they are called price taker. In this case, remember from the previous lecture, the world price that prevails in the market is not set by the buyer or the seller, but by the market. And we'll explain that again in more detail in chapter four when you read, uh, listen to those lectures and read um, your textbook. Here we have an example. Um, of a market and the um, and our market is soybeans. If this country, country X, chooses not to trade, the domestic market for soybeans is represented as such. Without trade, it's represented as such. Here we have um, the price, the market price would be $4 and 500 units would be sold. If, however, let me put this here. If, however, we, um, this country chooses to sell, then the price goes up from $4 to $6. And as you can see, the demand goes from 500 units to 300 units. The domestic demand goes from 500 to 300. And we will explain this more in detail in chapter four. But at the same time, whereas demand decreases by 200 units, supply increases by 250 units. So though the producers, the soybean farmers, would lose 200 units um, by $2, when the price increases to $2, they'll lose 200 units from the domestic market but would gain 250 units on the international market. So as a result, since they are going to gain 250 units and only lose um, 200 units domestically, in this instance, this industry, the producers are more likely to ex export or sell off some of their product um, in the world market. Remember um, here, CS stands for consumer surplus. And that is what the consumer, the domestic market, is willing to pay minus what they actually pay. And in this example, consumer surplus is represented by this area here, which is um, denoted as A. And it is this area here, which is denoted by B. And then the producer surplus is this area denoted by C. And what we would say is that total surplus is this area, this triangular area, A and B and C. That's without trade. When we factor in trade, what we find is that consumer surplus is now just A. 
because remember when we trade internationally the price goes up from four dollars to six dollars so our consumer surplus is just area a and our producer surplus would then be b d and c because remember that when the soybean farmers export their products this is the gain from exporting their products onto the world market and so then our total surplus would be consumer surplus plus producer surplus now remember that without trade it would be this triangular area for the domestic market and that's consumers and producers but with trade you have this area which is a b c and d and so as a result um, operating on the assumption that we operate rationally it would be rational for this economy for this country to export because they would gain d as a result of exporting their soybeans And again, there's your gain. To summarize, remember again that P sub D is our, our domestic price. P sub W is our world price. If our domestic price is less than our world price, we could expect these things to happen. That the country will export uh, consumer surplus falls, producer surplus rise, total surplus rise. And if, um, if the domestic price is greater than the world price, we would expect the country to import that good. This is for good. The price for the good, whether it's the domestic price or the world price. If the domestic price is greater than the world price, then we will import that good. Consumer surplus rises. Producer surplus falls, total surplus still rise. Now, again, as you can see, when we look individually at consumer versus producer surplus, there will be some individual loss. But if you remember from chapter one, I told you that international trade is a win-win. And it's a win-win because even though individually some there would be some loss, from the perspective of the overall economy, we see the gains. We see the gains here. And this, because total surplus rises in both instances, that's why we say that international trade is a win-win. There are other benefits for international trade, not just that total surplus rises. Um, other benefits from international trade is that consumers enjoy variety. Um, you are able to eat bananas year round because of international trade. You are able to um, eat tropical fruits because of international trade. Um, if you will look at the clothes you're currently wearing, you are able to wear those clothes because of international trade. Uh, over the holiday break, um, Nike released its latest edition of Jordans. And I was surprised because there's an actual schedule of, of release dates for tennis shoes. Who knew? Um, but we are able to purchase Nike Jordans, which are manufactured abroad and are, are actually imports um, as a result of international trade. And so you have a variety of goods and services available to you because of international trade. Another benefit is that producers are able to sell more because they are able to sell domestically and then they are also able to sell internationally. And then um, with uh, international trade, you have increased competition, which um, will help lower prices for some items. 
and also increase total welfare. Um, remember, we talked about um, when we when we trade internationally, whether the pri the domestic price is greater than or less than the world price, total surplus increases. That is uh, what is meant by um, the increase in total welfare. And then also another benefit of international trade is that trade um, enhances the flow of ideas. Um, we see this with the um, wireless, with um, cell phones. We went from the traditional cell phone to now we have smartphones. That would not have been possible having smartphones and having inexpensive smartphones. Um, as a, like now, um, you can get a cell phone for a couple of hundred dollars and, and or you can get a smartphone for less than a couple of hundred dollars. And that would not have been possible were it not for international trade because as we trade those goods, um, there's always um, that innovation that comes with ex the exchange of ideas and the exchange of technologies that will allow us to create better products at lower prices. This concludes this segment of the um, lecture. I look forward to speaking with you soon.